Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of Crystal Crafts. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my video and I have 10 people so far and that is more than I ever anticipated. It's a small number but it is still it's a large number at the same time so thank you for everyone who chose to subscribe to my videos. So first things first I will look down because I do have notes with me to stay on track. I'm going to try and make this video longer than the first video of nine minutes and I want to get this out of the way of where you can find me on the internet. So I wrote down this handy chart that is backwards so I will read it to you. I am on Etsy as Winter Apocalypse, all one word. I am on Instagram as Crystal Crafts 36. I'm on Ravelry, even though I'm not really active on Ravelry that much, but I am Hello KTY 13, short for Hello Kitty. I'm on Pinterest as Crystal C, and I am here's my email if you would like to contact me for any reason. It is winterapocalypse34 at gmail.com. So that is the first thing. I would like to also say a huge thank you to a couple other podcasters. Um, I'd been toying with doing this since October and I kept talking myself out of it, um, thinking, you know, I shouldn't do it, whatever, um, and decided, you know, let's go for it the other day. So um, I binge watched a lot of podcasts. A lot of them are knitting. Um, some of them are 50-50 where they're crochet and knitting. And I would like to say thank you to Kalisha from Quirky Monday, who goes by Nadir Tani, Hannah at the Cozy Cottage Crochet. I would like to thank Ross at Smells Like Yarn, Ella from No Catchy Name. I'd like to thank Claudia from Crochet Luna. And I would like to thank Kai from the Crochet Corner. And I would like to thank Meg for Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits because they in all of their videos had at least one video where they were like if you want to do this just go ahead and do it and that is what I did I decided to just go ahead and do it so um, let's go to works in progress right now right now I've been making little loveys and this is the head of a pig that I'm making this is the color. This is one ear that I've put together. And this is the body. Let me put that on top. So it's going to look like this, more or less. In the book, it actually has the eyes this close together, which I don't really like. But, you know, whatever. It's cute. It's pink. I like it. <laughs> Another work in progress that I have is this baby blanket that I started on Saturday night. I'm doing crossed double crochets. So you skip a stitch, you double you double crochet, you DC in the one stitch, and then you go back and cross over that stitch and go into the skip stitch. And it creates this really nice texture that I like. You can do it with as many as three or even four stitches at a time. Um, just cross them over, you just skip stitches and so on and just cross, cross over. Now this one is actually specifically for Kalisha um, at the Quirky Monday podcast. So she was inspired by the mandala crochet sweater that I had made um, using, I believe I used up to three different colorways. And so using mandala for the last year, I've come up with numerous just small balls and amounts of leftover yarn, um, half cakes, just small quantities, large quantities, etc. So I decided to make another sweater. And this is my scrap yarn sweater, all mandala, except for one, which is a glittery, sparkly yarn that I'm using. But everything is mandala. I don't care about the color. I don't care if it matches or anything like that. The whole point is that I'm just burning through all of my leftover yarn. So this is what this looks like so far. 
I've got everything from unicorn, unicorn moon, I've got fairy in here, um, just <laughs> chimera, uh, wizard, you name it, it's in here. Um, I even used white to break it up a little bit, but I'm still crocheting this, so this is work in progress. I've got different color baubles on the neckline, which is really easy to do. So that's one, that's another work in progress. The other work in progress is a cardigan that I've been working on. And I actually mentioned this in the first video and I forgot because I was nervous and I skipped it. So it was part of my yarn acquisitions. But this is the cardigan that I'm working on currently. This is made with Simply Soft Karen in carrot and it's also made with Red Heart Super Saver in Aaron Fleck. That is the back panel, and I've got my two front panels, and I just recently started the sleeves for that. Um, the other things that I have, I have now we are gonna do finished objects. This is something I have not weaved in my ends yet, but um, this is a sweater from, if I remember correctly, Inside Crochet Magazine. I can't remember which issue, but it is a deep necked, scoop neck sweater. And I used Karen Simply Soft in black, and I used Karen Simply Soft in party. And if you can see, I'm not sure if the light will hit it, but it's sparkly, it's very shiny, very sparkly. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera. Probably not. But anyway, it shines a lot. <laughs> um, so that's everything for that. This is a rag doll that I made my son. He loves this. I made him a long time ago a zombie doll, and it's just a gray floppy um, doll that has no features really or anything, and it has two different color eyes, and he loves it. He just loves the texture and uh, a lot of that, I believe, has to do with his autism. But this is what I made him, just using yarn that I was trying to use up and just burn through that I've had in my stash for a really long time. He's ripped off one of the ears. <laughs> but uh, this is his little creature. Pretty big. It was fun to make. I liked it. Um... All right, so now I'm going to go into books. I wanna show you some books that I've been working from, uh, where I get the, the sweaters and everything like that, and a few other books that I plan to work from. But um, right now, I make a lot of hats, and I have a lot of them in my Etsy store. Uh, and they come from this book, which is Crochet Boutique. You can get this currently on Amazon for $8. It is a $20 book that you can get for eight. So I would jump on that. The author's name is Rachel Oglesby. And this is the slouchy beanie that I've made a million of. It's my favorite, favorite book. And this is the book that you can usually get for $12 on Amazon. And this is where I get my crochet sweaters. I prefer top down so that I can try them on. Um, let me show you the pattern gallery so that you can get an idea of what's in here. These are some of the sweaters. There's cabling, which for me is a challenge. I've yet to teach myself how to do cabling. That's just an example of some of the sweaters. Um, here is the rest of them, or a few more of them. Another book that I plan on working from for my son is Edward Menagerie's um, series. This one is Doll Emporium, as you can see. And the cool part about this book is it is a flip book. So as an example, here's the front. I can choose a princess with any head I want to use.
or a merman, mermaid. And it make, there's little accessories that you can make. There's um, shorts and underwear that you can also make these dolls. And I just love the look of, the, of them. You can get this book currently on Amazon for, I believe it's on sale right now for also $12. Now a book I highly recommend for people if you are a beginner or if you want to try to you know, design things like blankets that you want something different. Um, you're just sick of the same three stitches that you probably are used to or something. You know, you want to do something fantastic. I recommend this book. You can also get this really cheap on Amazon as well. I don't know the current price. I did not look it up. But the complete book of crochet stitch designs. This is a wonderful, wonderful book. It is thick comes with so many designs. I'll show you the gallery so you can get an idea here without me showing you any of the actual patterns, which would not be good. Everything is numbered, but in the book itself, everything is chaptered out into the type of stitch. So if it's a fan stitch, there you go, I'll show you that. If it's a fan stitch, a single crochet stitch, a double crochet motif or anything like that, it is grouped out, sectioned up. Great book. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so that's good for books. Now, what am I currently watching while I crochet? The most recent thing I added was this new Netflix original series called You. I found it to be, it's quirky. It's not really horror. It's not really thriller to me. I'm very picky. I'm a huge horror fan. Uh, but it was watchable. But I will say this, if you're not into gratuitous sex scenes, then definitely do not watch this. I, it is just whatever. But you know, because I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. I'm still watching Wanted, um, crime drama from Australia. And the other thing is, I finally jumped on the bandwagon and decided to watch Making a Murderer. It's, it's watchable, but it feels like The Staircase, which is another crime documentary um, that kind of just drones on and, you know, whatever. But uh, that's what I'm watching. So my personal life, my son recently got two awards at school for Most Improved Reading. I won't show you the certificates because I don't obviously want you to know where he goes to school. Um, but he won um, also, yeah, I can't remember what the second award was, but it was something that he improved in again also. Um, things coming up also. Recently, I have to switch doctors. I'm waiting on my next appointment, which will be January 16th, and I'm dreading this appointment. I'm worried that the doctor won't let me stay on the medications the previous doctor had put me on. I'm, you know, relatively stable. I still have my, my episodes here and there, um, but the cocktail of medications I'm on, I take a lot of medication to try to sleep, um, calm down my manic uh, my mania at night. Um, as I've gotten older, my depression has changed a lot. It used to be where during the daytime, when I was younger, I was very manic. And for those who don't know, mania will usually be, it's either irritability some or sometimes it will manifest as hyperactivity, um, grandiose thoughts, just, you know, a high energy, high impact type of thing. But as I've gotten older, my mania has turned into um, a nighttime problem. So it can take me without medication hours and hours before I will fall asleep naturally, which is obviously not good. So that is something I'm not looking forward to. Now, Something going around, no one knows that I exist yet, so um, I haven't been tagged, but I decided to do it anyway, which is 
10 non yarny things about me. Um, but this one I'm going to add, it's a yarny thing. I've been crocheting for 13 years, give or take, and I am a self taught crocheter. So I taught myself how to use to read charts, which is very handy and I highly recommend that you do because um, sometimes you'll have a written pattern and it doesn't make sense and there is a typo or something in the pattern. And so if you have a chart to refer to, because some books will have the chart as well as the written pattern, you'll notice that the chart is on point and the written has a mistake and it doesn't match. So it's best to read off of the chart so that you can figure out what the mistake is. It's a lot easier, but I highly recommend if, because I know a lot of people use YouTube, which I can't do. Um, I do watch some videos to, you know, learn something new, like a new stitch or something from um, the gentleman who does a new stitch a day crochet. He also does knitting videos. Um, number two, I have one child. I am an only child and my son is an only child and hopefully it will stay that way. I, as I mentioned before, I'm a huge horror fan. The bloodier the better. I just, I love horror movies. I've always loved them since I was a little kid. Um, it was the 80s and the 90s. I was desensitized very early on. Um, number four, I'm an only child. No siblings. Uh, I am a former artist. And the reason I say former is because over the years, um, I had a lot of problems with my depression that led to uh, numerous breakdowns, very severe breakdowns um, that would cause me to leave my job, um, just what, you know, just various problematic things. And something happened in one final breakdown and it's gonna sound weird and a lot of people don't believe it when I say it, but it happened it erased the ability to draw. I used to draw, I've, I've drawn since I was a kid, since I was little. Um, and around the time that I turned 27, um, after a breakdown, I lost the ability to draw. I have all the technical know-how. I can teach someone to draw if I wanted to, but I myself can no longer draw. It looks like I've never picked up a pencil before in my life. It was very hard on me. I mourned the loss of that skill. I went to graphic design school. I didn't finish, but I wanted to originally go to fashion school, fashion design, but um, it was too expensive at the time. So I chose graphic design. Um, but I wanted to show you some of my work so that you could just see what I'm talking about here. Um, this is various various pieces from over the years. This is just a charcoal drawing that I did. Another face. These are photocopies of paintings that I did. Funny story behind these paintings, I was severely manic one night and I pumped out about 14 paintings in little over six hours. They were gigantic. They were about, I want to say 48 by 20 something, but they were, they were huge. A friend of mine has um, one of the original paintings hanging in her house actually at the moment. This is something I did in graphic design school. It was about depression. This is my pride and joy. I love this one. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up to the camera very closely so that you can see why. She's wearing fishnet stockings. Sorry about the glare. Charcoal and pen. This is my favorite. Just another little thing I did. This I did it when um, I was working at Gameworks on the strip. 
I was uh, bored. My The ride that I was running didn't have any customers. And this one. Not my best. This is near the end of being able to draw. Part of my art life also was that I um, used to decorate nightclubs for the holidays. It was myself, my ex-husband, and a friend of ours. This is also something I know I shouldn't have folded these, but whatever. This is a oil pastel with charcoal. And this is something I did in high school. So that's it for that. Um, so former artist. I collect Funko Pops. I love Funko. I stayed away from it for years and years, but I got bitten by the bug and I bought Pops. Um, I was also a prop artist. Uh, I've had two jobs, um, one official, one unofficial. My official was when I was 18, right after high school. I was working for FAO Schwartz here in Las Vegas. Um, at Caesars Palace. I was in the graphic design department and I would build, or not build, but I would make the signage for the different displays for the toys and things like that. Um, in my 20s, I, my ex-husband and I and our friend, we would build large props for the local chapter of Burning Man in Las Vegas, not the one in Reno. And we would build these large scale props that we would in the end set on fire in the desert with a bunch of people. Um, it was very fun. Uh, it was a great time, not with the people, but the activities that we did. I have lived in Vegas on and off since 1986. So I have seen this place grow. I have seen this place fall down and be rebuilt. I remember Caesar's Palace being the small, tiny little parking lot, um, and now it's its own gigantic city, practically. The first four years of my life, this is number nine, I grew up in Germany, in West Berlin. Both my parents are veterans, and my mom got out when she became pregnant with me. My dad, he was a sergeant um, in the military, in the army, and we were stationed in West Berlin. And when I was about to turn five, we moved back to America and we went back to um, where I was born, which was Fort Ord Military Base in just outside of Monterey. And number 10, I have never watched The Godfather. I have never sat through that movie. I've never sat through the series. I don't know if I ever will. I would like to, but I just one of those people who just like there are people who've never watched Star Wars I've never watched The Godfather um here is one last I'm gonna go back to works in progress this is something that I'm making for my parents and it is a history of every bit of yarn I have ever owned it is a scrap blanket that I'm making them and I'm gonna actually stand up so I can show you this This is how big it is so far. And it's just a continuous run on. And I actually plan on leaving all of the tails. That is something that I've noticed is actually really in right now um, in clothing, crochet clothing, is to actually leave the tails as decoration. So I'm going to do that. And also uh, what I'm wearing here is my um, Fantastic Beasts shirt, if anyone's a fan of that. So typically I, I do sell things that I crochet. Um, I have a small group of people that buy from me, which, you know, and I like to keep it that way. I don't like the pressure. I used to sell and make fairy doors out of polymer clay. 
um, so I had my own Facebook group and everything like that. I had a couple hundred people in there, but um, I eventually just shut it down. I didn't want to do it anymore. Recently, I decided to do a mystery trade with a friend who makes her own soap. She goes by Malavith Red on Facebook. She makes wonderful, wonderful soaps. I crocheted for her a huge amount of hats and scarves and things like that. And she sent me this gigantic box filled with all of her soap that she makes. Just soap after soap. The, the one that I found the funniest, which I cannot wait to use, is Dragon's Blood, which is a charcoal activated soap. Let me take it out of the bag so you can see it without the glare. I wish you could smell this because everything just smells so wonderful. But this is Dragon's Blood for obvious reasons. <laughs> She makes um, lotions, she makes uh, lip balms, uh, hair care products, uh, just all natural everything. She uses all of the actual chemicals. This is not something that you would just pick up in a store for the kit, um, glycerin soap or anything like that. She makes hot and cold processed soaps. They're wonderful. They're great on my skin. There's no overly being dry or anything like that. Um, sorry about the noise. And I've run out of things to say. So <laughs> this video is officially 26 minutes long, which is better than my really quick number one video of nine minutes. Uh, it was great talking to everyone, and I am going to say goodbye. So have a good day. Have a great rest of the week, and I will see you next Monday. If you haven't already, Please share my videos with someone if you know that they might like a crafty video. Um, please like the videos if you do like them. If you would like to leave comments or contact me in any way, remember my email is winterapocalypse34 at gmail.com. And if I reach 100 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. And if you would like to donate to giveaways or anything like that so that we can have actually more frequent giveaways that would be greatly appreciated and you can contact me by email or contact me here on YouTube and I'll try and see the message I get the notification so um, so that is it I forget what else I was saying so have a great week everyone bye